Hi, Mona. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. Alhamdulillah. All is well. Are we? How many are we? I don't know. It depends who shows up. There are 40 people on the list and a reminder has been sent. So it depends when they come in. Okay. How have you been doing? As a one is Ontario as a self-development tool, how to use it for self-development and what does yes. the journey of the fool mean. And then the second one is how to design your own tarot based on flowers. So it's just pictures of flowers and what they mean and the interpretation. The third one is on how to develop your psychic ability. Yes. And, and the fourth one is it's called the tarot bible so it's like a huge book on the tarot everything history spreads uh healing you know everything and then the fifth one i've just finished is is called chakra healing yeah and there's one more on numerology and one more on dream interpretation which is going to be like a really big book like a bible on dreams hopefully wow so i'm really excited yeah but you said last time when we when we met, you said it, the dream is is don't go and uh, don't go and look it up on internet because everything is a bit is different for everybody, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some universal symbols, if you like, but the way your brain makes up the dream is based is on your dictionary of symbols. So people you, that mean something to you, whether good or bad, you weave a story around them because your brain is trying to tell you something. So you can tell a little bit if you look on the internet, but really the interpretation is more meaningful if you learn how to decipher your own dictionary. You know, yeah. your codes of dreams, then the dream is relevant to you. And that way you bridge your unconscious with the conscious. I mean, that's the whole point of awareness is to make the unconscious conscious and dream right. are a great way of doing that. Okay. And yeah. you said you mentioned write down. Write them down. Yeah. Every day, whatever you remember, whatever you get. And the more you write, the more you begin to remember. So you'll have the whole story, the more your unconscious is engaged with your conscious. So your brain knows, I really want to know what's going on. And then the more that opens up. And but so what you, does it mean when somebody doesn't dream? It means that so much. it means that your brain is too busy because we always dream, but we don't always remember. It means that you don't have the intention to remember or work with your dreams. So the <laughs> that, you know, like under covers until you write down, then the brain sees, OK, she's serious. She wants to work on her dreams and it begins to open up. So it's very important that it's intentional. Yeah. A, a, a great guide of mine, spiritual guide said, um, consciousness can only change with the application of consciousness. So in other words, you need to be aware of what you're doing, mm -hmm. otherwise mm -hmm. it changes. So you have to get a pen, you have to get a journal, you have to write the question down, you have to put the date down, you have to tell yourself, I'm tracking my awareness or my progress, and you will start remembering dreams. But I also learned a lot of techniques from the Silva method, you know, Jose Silva. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really amazing. It's like you drink half a glass of water before you go to bed. And you say, when I drink the remaining half in the morning, I will remember my dream. And like really within three days, I started remembering my dreams. So you, you need to kind of put pegs in your mind to tell your mind to put the order in, if you like. And then the program starts to work that way. But it's not hard, really. Yeah. And you relax and you breathe and you have a few moments by yourself, you know, before you go to bed so that the brain can like switch wavelengths and it will help you. So just like a little bit of, of work, not too much, but it's really worth it. You know, when I read dreams from 10, 20 years ago, it's absolutely incredible. Sometimes it's about meeting people that I've just met now and I've written about them in my dreams like 20, 25 years ago. Yeah, I've I've 
I've done that too. I mean, that happened to me too. And when I wake up, I know this is something meaningful. I don't write it, but I know it's meaningful. Yeah. But I don't understand it. But yeah. then down the line, I'm like, oh, I did. Yes, I did. I know exactly what that meant now. Yeah. And sometimes you have the meaning of the dream in your mind. You understand the essence of it, if you like. Maybe you, know, you don't know the parts. But in general, you get an answer mm -hmm. to a question. Yeah. It's like the knowledge remains, although you may not remember the details. Yeah. So it all goes into the consciousness, but it's about making it conscious so that it's useful to you. And then you can use your time when you're asleep to really work with your dreams and sort out a lot of problems. I mean, the big problems I really sleep on and I let my brain sort it out while I'm asleep. And usually it works. Oh, uh, yeah? Mm. Well, the big problem is what, uh, the, what I'm going <laughs> right now is um, I put my head down below underneath like a, like a struzzo. What's it called? Like a, so I, put, I bury my head inside the sand okay. and hope that it'll just go <laughs> away. It's true. No, no. And then just for a while. Much. Yeah. And then I come up and say okay now i'm ready <laughs> no that's important too it's important to deal with stuff when you can but it's important that it's not an escape mechanism yeah. because i think you get stronger when you face issues but sometimes it just doesn't feel right like you know today was not the right day to apply for my application then i leave it yeah right but in general i feel you know when you face a problem it just makes you stronger and then it gets easier to deal with stuff you know like a lot of people i remember like in england you know used to get a lot of bills and they just keep them in the drawer i mean they're not going to pay themselves by themselves you know? <laughs> and then it gets really big because you get overwhelmed that is not very healthy to do yeah yeah, so the, like, yeah. a little bit of a difference so long as it doesn't go out of um, uh, I, had, I, I just came back from a weekend where i was talking about you to a friend um to a friend who uh, and i recommended you and we were i was explaining to her how the whole thing about dreaming and how you could really help guide her and so you would be soon receiving a phone call or oh brilliant thank you what's her yeah. name claudia okay wonderful uh claudia and so Yes, I'm, I'm sure that she would be contacting you. Also, because she, um, I've, uh, she is very sensitive and receives more than she can deal with. And okay. so I, I explained to her how you can help with channeling. Sure. Putting, yeah, controlling this and knowing how to work with these. She, she channels, she writes. No, and I told her, I said, you know, Sahar was telling me how um, I should write everything, write everything as soon as, uh, as soon as you wake up and just write. And she does some, some of these things and she does, like, she, she believes also into the, the, the cards and reading cards and things like this. So I think, I think it'll be good for her to talk to you. Excellent, excellent. Because I also do master classes. So she can take like a two hour session and then the dream. Three means go. Oh, where are you going, Rocky? Hello? Hello? How are you? Hi, Suzanne. Very good. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Tamam. And I thought that it's uh, nine uh, Be El Beirut time, I thought. Ah, no, Dubai time. So, what time do you have now? Seven? It's eight. Ah, okay. Only one hour difference? Yes. Okay. Okay, Susanna, so meet Mona. Mona is from Europe, and we just started. I don't know who else is joining, so it depends. But do you have a question in mind? Uh, now? No, just uh, I'll listen. Okay. And then uh, during the session, I'll ask uh, if you don't mind. La, I don't mind at all. And how are you in general? You're well? Alhamdulillah. Fine. Everything. Excellent. About what are you talking? We were I'm talking sorry. about dreams and how important it is to understand your dreams 
to work with them, to write them down, to learn the language of your mind and how working with dreams is a very good way of bridging the unconscious with the conscious. Yani, awareness is defined as making you conscious of whatever you're not aware of. So dreams mm -hmm. is the realm of the unconscious. And when you start working with your dream, your brain understands or your mind understands, okay, she really wants to face things and change them. So for me, it's a very pleasant way, indirect, gentle way of working with my mind so that I can understand what are the issues that I'm going through and why. Does that make sense? Yes, uh, for, uh, of course. Uh, I'm not putting hijab. Uh, is there anyone? Uh, I don't know. Sometimes we have one gentleman joining, so you can come on camera and then block it as soon as he comes in. If he's coming in, I don't know. I just have a feeling that we're not going to be very many today. I don't know why. Maybe it's a busy weekend. It's back to school weekend here in Dubai. Tomorrow. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Maybe, maybe everyone is, is busy getting their children ready for school. I don't know. <laughs> yes. So, so you're not taping this t this time, Sahar? I am taping it. I may not publish it or publish it. It depends on what we talk about. But I will send you the recording in either cases. Okay. I want to ask you something. طب خليني شوفك سوزان and then we yeah. switch off yeah لا okay so yeah yeah finally I met Suzanne on during lockdown um on, on Instagram oh. so we never saw each other <laughs> okay we were always chatting bravo well done for you and all the changes that you made okay so what's on your mind okay I just want to ask you, I don't want to interrupt you, but uh, I want to ask you like, a personal question about me and my husband. Sure. What's your question? Uh, uh, that he's losing weight and uh, he reached a stage that uh, uh, when I look at him, uh, he's, uh, he's shown that he's smaller than me, not suiting me. And this is teasing me. He's Te losing weight. But... He is teasing you? Well, into you are being yani, triggered by it. Yes, I'm, I'm triggered. Yeah, his, his look is triggering me that, you know, uh, he's not suiting me. Uh, why? If he looks better, if he's healthier, why would that bother but, you? But he's very thin now. Yeah, he's in my, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, my height is 171. I'm 72. He's uh, 70. Uh, I'm 72 and he's 70. It's okay. Yeah, where's the problem? I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story. My uncle was one foot shorter than his wife, probably. My sister is maybe half a foot taller than her husband. Yeah, I mean, these things on the outside, they don't really matter. Yeah, we're talking about unboxing and awareness. You need to be aware of the essence of why you are with this man. Why is he your partner? But for me, from my perspective, if my partner, my husband is getting healthier, losing weight, looking better, it means that we can continue the journey together. So it shouldn't really bother you. But I want to tell you a story. I had a friend in England, fantastic teacher, actually. I learned the art of dream interpretation from her. She had a son who was about 14 years old, but he was nine years old height. Yeah, so he was really shorter than his class. And okay. she wanted to talk to him, you know, not to be embarrassed about it. And she wanted to make sure, is he okay with it? So she said, you know, are you OK, you know, with being shorter than everyone else in the class? And he said, I thought about it. He said something can either be a problem or not a problem. If it is a problem, it's either my problem or their problem. If it is their problem, then it's not my problem and I don't care. So why are you making it your problem if he's looking better, if he's losing weight, if everything is good? Who's going to judge you? But you. Yeah. I'm feeling, and I, I heard it uh, uh, from my mom. Um, my mom it, um, affected me negatively. Yani. Okay, the... stop, stop. So you already know the answer. Your mom affects you negatively. Your mom says that you don't look like you suit your husband. Is your mom married to your husband? No, but... If you uh, make it your problem, it will be a problem. I would say, thank God he's healthy. I assume he's healthy, do a blood test. If he's healthy, nothing is wrong, then it's, why should it bother them? And you know that this is how people have control over you. By saying something that affects you, makes you feel bad. 
It means you don't have boundaries. It means you're giving your power away. So stop doing it. She's my mom, Yanni. The, oh, the, did your mom the ask your opinion about the man she's going to marry? Did she ever ask you, do I look like I fit my husband or not? She lived her life her way. So why do you allow her to live her life through you? You're responsible to live your own life your own way. So what is Susanna doing? She's inviting her family to interfere in her marriage just because her husband lost weight. How does that sound? But come in, um, when I look at him, I that, feel that- so How does that sound? When I tell you, my mom makes me feel bad because she's commenting on my husband, whom I love, I'm with, I have children with, and she makes me feel bad because we don't look good together. How does that sound? You, you, know, you know that the mother and the father affect the, the, the child a lot. Am I right? Yeah, Only, maybe. First of all, first, okay, stop, first. stop. First of all, you're not a child. You're an adult. So yes, when you're a child, listen to me. When you're a child, you don't know right from wrong. You don't have a well-developed intellect. And yes, parents can affect you negatively. So when you're an adult and you allow your mom to interfere and to affect you negatively, the problem is yours, not hers. And if you joined us before, I always give this as an example. Life is like driving. When you're driving, you're not responsible for how other people drive. You're only responsible for how you drive and to get yourself safely to where you want to go. But you don't get out of your car and you start lecturing people on their driving. So I don't care how your mom drives her life, but I care about you because you're the one who's here. So if you have a problem with mom because she interferes, even though she's your mom, she has no right to interfere with personal things that have got to do with your husband. It's not even to do with her. So this is where boundaries come into place. And as an adult, you live your life. And if you're happy with him and the whole family is happy, then don't let her interfere. I don't but care I'm who she is. With, I'm not happy with him. I, I love him that he's, uh, Yanni. That's he a looks... separate problem, okay? But you don't add this problem on another problem. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Just because she's saying you don't look good together, you don't start thinking, oh my God, I can't stand him. I want to leave him. Because that's not the problem. His weight is not the problem. Yes, I know. So yes, separate no. problems, whatever it is that you're unhappy with your husband about, you need to talk about it. Yeah, I'm not, Yanni, I want to see if somebody else has a question, but we'll come back to you if we have time, if we don't have any more people tonight. But separate the problems, Yanni. Do you see what you did here? You linked so many things together, and this is called a constellation. So to your mind, your situation seems so huge because you have linked all these problems that are not really linked. So start separating problems, deal with each one separately and gradually make a progress forward. But don't add this on top of that, because then you would lose track of what is the real problem. Mm. Because the right solution to the wrong problem is not a solution. Mm. So you don't tell him, go and put on weight because my mom is unhappy and I am unhappy with you. I mean, I you don't do that. Okay. 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 I understand. <laughs> okay. I just want to say hello to Katie. If you have any question, unmute and ask, or I don't know, raise your hand or chat or whatever you want to do. If you don't. Hello. Hi. How are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Do Thank you have you. any question in mind? We were just chatting i, I actually chat. don't i just wanted to hop on and say hi and maybe something will come here as i'm okay as i'm sitting well, but we, i don't have any passing. we don't have an agenda this is just to help you guys and to thank everybody mm -hmm. and my clients for being with me for like the last 30 years mona and i mm -hmm. mona is in europe um susanna is in lebanon i don't know where you're calling from this evening but you can tell us <laughs> i'm uh, i'm here in upstate new york Oh, wow. Fantastic. So thank you for taking time out. We were just discussing dreams. We were discussing awareness. What is awareness? And when I and I started talking about dreams and I said dreams is a very good way of working with your unconscious because the dreams are, are a language made up by your mind. And when you work with your dreams, <clears throat> excuse me, it tells your mind that I want to open up. I want to understand the patterns that are unconscious to me 
And then we move to um, <clears throat> Susanna, where she started linking a lot of problems she's going through. And I said, don't do that because most of us do that anyway. This is how our brain works. It puts things together, it puts fragments together, and then we think, oh, this is a huge, big problem, and then we can't solve it. So the orig original problem was to do with boundaries and not letting other people interfere in her life. But then she unconsciously used that to kind of talk about problems between her and her partner. And I said, you don't do that. You separate the problems. You're not responsible for how other people drive their cars. Um, because for me, life is like driving. You're, you're supposed to perfect your own skills and deal with life rather than blame your issues and problems on other people. So if something is a problem, if it's your problem, then you deal with it. If it's not your problem, then it's somebody else's problem, then don't even go there. Um, and this is actually a very important point, um, people. A lot of especially women ask me, like, how does he feel about me? How does he think about me? I don't know. And I don't care. What I care about is the kind of relationship you're getting or the kind of the way that you're being treated, because people's minds are a very messy place. So you just assume and accept it is for what it is. But you are half of the equation. If you can change what you can about yourself, then do that. But don't go and start assuming, do they like me or not like me? Do they love me or not love me? Because you should like you, you should love you. You should not give your power away to other people. You know, like I don't exist unless they love me. That's not very healthy. And the whole point of unboxing is to really accept who you are, to stop rejecting what you don't like about yourself. And this, when you turn it inside that way, this is what's empowering. And then we truly say what we mean, we mean what we say, and we begin to live the kind of life that we want without, to use your analogy, when I'm putting our head in the sand and hoping that everything <laughs> is okay. No, really, because I think it's more empowering when you know that I am in charge. You know, when I make a mistake, I tell myself, great, I effed up, but I can do it because I did it. I can undo it. Do you see what I mean? And I find that very empowering as opposed to say, well, she made me do it or what he said made me. Um, say that that means you're not consciously in command of your mind of your words of your communication of anything so why are we giving that power away and this is why we get stuck because we think we don't have the answers we think it's not our fault and this is when you lose track of of how to drive yourself forward in a right safe enjoyable way does that make sense yes so Sahar, can yeah. I like tonight, can I ask and, and uh, you let me know if this is okay with sure. you. Um, can I ask you to kind of, uh, can I tap into your psychic sure, sure. Uh, talents? Sure. Just and uh, like if I give you my date of birth, can you do a reading for me? Sure. More, more give from me a the... Question. Yeah, give me a question. More, from from your psychic, uh, whatever you're receiving. I understand. But the point okay. is to help you get unstuck, not, not to just give you a reading. As I said, it's how <laughs> you can manage yourself, right? Which is the reason why I moved into mentoring, because I was giving enough fantastic readings to people. But if you don't do what you need to do, then nothing will happen. Okay. So you just tell me what's on your mind and give me your date of birth. So date of birth is 23.08.68. Okay. And happy birthday. birthday. Had a birthday. Oh wow, nice that yesterday or when? Where are we? Yes, okay. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. <laughs> and what's your question, Mona? Um my question is I'm sensing that was a uh it was a terrible birthday. <laughs> no, but what I'm sensing is that you had uh, a terrible birthday. Some something really, really big happened on on that same day, and I couldn't uh, reschedule it. So it, uh, anyway, um, my question is: I'm sensing. I know that I am at a point where it's you are. You are. This is I'm a closing. I'm closing something. 
and start and something new. Yeah. I but I don't know what I'm starting. I know I am I, I a very know, positive but, person. And so I know looking, that if it closes, looking, something else is opening. Looking at your numbers, your number is number one. Yeah. Your soul number, destiny number, it's actually a 10, but one and zero is one. Yeah. So when a number has a zero in front of it, it amplifies the qualities of that number. And your personal year, which started from your date of birth, is also a year of 10, one and zero and one. So everything is amplified. And everything is amplified so that you can see the patterns clearly. And the patterns, as you reflect on them, will kind of tell you where the carpet, which way the carpet is unrolling in front of you. So it is a huge, big change, but it's a change, vertical change. So you're moving into a different level. So the one becomes a 10. So you're moving upwards. It's about up leveling for the lack of a better word. It's about revisiting the past to learn from it so that you can modify things and create a better next 10 years to come or however, uh, nine years moving from one to nine. So this year, a lot of sensitivity. I bet you were extremely moody, you know, going up and down. I bet it was very dramatic because your central number, your month is eight and eight is the karmic number. It's the, car it's the number of balance meaning the scales can tip either way because eight is very sensitive. But the upside of being an eight at your core essence is that if anything goes wrong, you will know immediately. So if things are really bad, if you take the right action in the opposite direction of what got you here, you will immediately gain your balance. Mm -hmm. but the decisions and the reflections need to be done from the heart, from the fourth chakra, not from the personality not from the ego, not from a place of heart, but really for the place of, of the love of you, you know, yeah, like, yeah. okay, you know, why did this happen to Mona? What about it? What is it that I need to modify, revise, amplify, or modify in my life? So I would say this is a year of sensitivity, modification, reflection, um, taking the right decision that would make you happier from here, um, literally from your heart. It is also a year of writing for you. There's a lot of writing, a lot of communication. You do need a degree of rhythm. What's missing about you is rhythm. It's kind of having, if your life was a piece of music, um, it's a fantastic sheet of music, but I don't know what it sounds like because there's no timing, there's no rhythm. So rhythm is the energetic structure that allows us to manifest. It's the mold that holds what we want to materialize in our life right so you need rhythm you know like I, I get up at the same time i mean more or less i go to sleep at the same time i do laundry on tuesday i go out to the beach on fridays i see my friends on thursday i don't know there's no rhythm i can't I'm, stand that i'm not saying routine i'm saying rhythm so the rhythm is like the the legs to the tabletop so that your life keeps moving it's like the tracks of a train you have to put tracks it's okay to be in the now, but you also need the vision long term. You know, what am I going to do next week, next month, next year? I don't pick up a rhythm. So the structure is not about like for most people, structure, which is number four, um, which is where you are now. It's about like storage, decluttering, blah, blah. Yours is on a higher level. It's to do with having a rhythm to life that automatically things happen because you've programmed them that way does that make sense so i'm not talking about a routine that binds you I'm talking about you what is who are you what is the expression of your life you know read a new book once a month watch a new whatever lecture uh once a week learn a new language once a year i don't know i don't see i don't detect a rhythm let me say so the rhythm is the thing that's gonna guide you forward because once you've established what you like to do, you're going to uncover what your core values are. At the moment, you have no direction because you don't really know what you want. That's what I pick up. But the minute, the minute you establish structure, you're going to start resonating, moving, leaning into these things that you love. And this is where the path starts to unfold. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. There is also a lot of information. I said writing, you need to write down. You need to write down your thoughts before you sleep, you know, like phew, flush a radiator, empty your thoughts. You need to put things down. 
So very simply, what I do every year is I write myself a letter. We're coming up to the end of the year. I write myself a letter. I give thanks to whatever has happened in the past year. But I also give thanks. I pretend it's the end of, like, let's say, 2023. And I give thanks to all the things that have happened in 2023. So when 2023 comes, I open the letter and I read it. And almost always what I've planned happens. So I'm saying you need to plant some seeds, you know? So very simply, you can make a short list, you know, three things that you wanna get done this week, three things that you wanna get done in the next three months, three things that you wanna get done in the next three years, anything that kind of helps to move you forward. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? That's yeah. missing. You're so open to anything that drops out of the sky so you're not actively participating into what you want to create in your life. That's mm. missing. And you feel a bit lost because you're used to being guided and now you're not getting any guidance because it's you who needs to instigate the guidance. You need to establish the rhythm, you know, do things like what I described, and then more information will come. So you're moving, if you will, from apprenticeship into mastery. So you need to do in order to get a result, not just sit there and wait to be inspired. Yeah, it's not sitting there. It's it's kind of it's kind of believing that the universe is going to make it okay for me and going to uh, the guide universe, me. The universe will not make it okay for you. You will make it okay for you. The but the, but, but you everything. Yes, but things like it. it Yes, you're right. Maybe just sitting and, uh, but it's not sitting idly, but I'm just, no, no, I I'm, just, not, I'm, uh, not, I'm confident not, that things will stop, be stop. okay. I'm not, I'm not judging you or blaming you. I mean, I don't know what's happening in your life. I'm saying in general, when someone has developed enough, they have to take action into what they want to manifest in their life. You yeah. don't wait. Do you understand? Yeah. The way yeah. you will get guidance is by taking an action. You'll get a, a reaction immediately. And if things go wrong, then okay, that's the wrong path. And you are built that way because you have the eight. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a different level of awareness where yeah. you need to participate because you're making your own karma, okay? The universe will support everything. I mean, anybody, because it's, you know, the way that the support comes is from thought forms that we project if they mm -hmm. build up, good or bad, then things will happen. But the universe does not distinguish between, oh, this is a good thought, okay, we'll make it happen. This is a bad thought, oh, we're not gonna make it happen. It doesn't work that way, it's just energy. So whatever you build too much energy towards will manifest. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. So there's no right or wrong. Yeah. I told you earlier, what will guide yeah. you is your heart. If something yeah. feels good, makes me feel energized, you know, gives me a reason to live, then it is the right thing without having any phenomena or whatever. So mm -hmm. this is when you know you've become a master. So I have a feeling like, you know, you're afraid to take the wrong step forward. And I just wanted to say, it's not about that. It's about doing truly what you're engaged in, setting the goal because energy flows where intention goes. So put few intentions down. You know, intentions can be, I want clarity on my path. I want to remember my dreams. Um, I had an affirmation, for example, which really works for me. I only react to positive suggestions in my life. I move forward with ease and joy. So if someone invites me to dinner and I don't get ease and joy and I, I, I don't get a reaction, I'm like, oh, okay, let me see. I'll check my diary. Then it really means deep down on a soul level, I don't care if I go or not, or this is not an important event in my life. So I decline. Does that make sense? So this can be mm -hmm. on a low level mm -hmm. or yeah. it can be on a high level. Same yeah. thing. You know, somebody wanted to do a partnership, you know, business partnership with me. I didn't react. So put the program in first that I will only react to positive suggestion, you know. Um, on the opposite level, for example, you know, a friend said, let's go to the beach. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And we did it. So I immediately felt good about that and it got done. So this is how we become in charge. So when we go through the heart, okay, I wanted to explain something. Um, when you're developing, the world we exist in is the world of duality. Like imagine you have a pet and you want to train this pet. 
whenever they do something right, you reward them, you give them a treat or whatever it is. If they do something wrong, then you lock them in the bathroom for a couple of minutes or whatever it is, right? So through conditioning, you can train them to know what is right, what is wrong, what is good for them, what is not good for them. When we're children, we're trained kind of that way. We live in that world of duality, yes or no. You know, you're in my house, you follow my rules, blah, blah, blah. But then when you grow older and you become an adult, this duality begins to merge again and gives us a lot of power, which is the reason why we feel we are our own person. I want my own boundaries. I'm individuating and our own true expression begins to come out. Right. So when you're through, you know, when same thing, when you develop, you don't have that duality. It's not like, oh, my God, if I wear a red dress, things will go right. But if I wear a yellow one, it will go wrong. We don't operate on that level, if you like, anymore. So when you go to your heart, by the time you develop the, the bottom three chakras, if you will, are the personality or the ego, you know, what we call what we are called by our names, but your consciousness doesn't operate like that. So when we begin to move to the heart center, our spiritual consciousness or intangible consciousness comes into play. And the heart always knows the truth because it's got nothing to do with the belief system. So it's got nothing to do with past experiences or whatever it is. You either react in the now, you feel good about something and you do it, or you don't, like mm -hmm. we were saying. And if it doesn't feel right, maybe it's not right right now. So you sleep on it for a couple of days and then you take an action. So you, you transcend the world of duality. So there is no, oh my God, if I turn right, it's wrong. If I take a left turn, then it's right. You know what I'm saying? So you're still a bit like that, that there is no right or wrong. It's whatever you want it to be, providing you feel good about it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi, Muhammad. Good to see you. Okay. Katie has just sent a message. She has a question. Yeah, Katie, either share it or, or type it or whatever you're comfortable with. Or yeah. Say it. Okay. Oh, well, sure. Do you do you need my birth info? It depends on the question. Or... I don't always need it, but sometimes it helps okay. to kind of look at big trends. But yeah, give me yeah. your date and what is what well, is your question? Okay, my birthday's of uh, January 29th, 1974. 291 1974. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely feel like I'm in a big trend of um welcome, to be... welcome to the club we all are yeah. especially since the last <laughs> full moon you know mm -hmm. it's been called the lion's gate so like the whole of consciousness everything the planet mm -hmm. and we are part of the planet so we mm -hmm. are changing you know which is why mm -hmm. i think it's a good time um well there's just lots of refinements that i'm noticing absolutely that's excellent very actually. particular um people coming and people falling away and there's a specific um, friendship that I've had that's been very nurturing, very expanding. She's my astro twin, so we know each other very well. Okay. And then I have kind of a confrontational conversation with her because I was hurt by um, by something, just a way that I felt wasn't very something, caring. Something she said or did? Yeah. Well, my father passed away, and I just I didn't hear from her at all, and I just was disappointed so i just told her i was disappointed because i expected some sort of care okay. or support or check-in and okay what did she say she, she said that i'm not the kind of friend that i am okay did she, validate um, that? Did she say why um uh, she just was very kind of like I, that's I, I mean I feel like I'm a good friend to you I've given you lots of connections which she has and I said yeah that's true and I said okay I guess I just had different expectations of you know how we, you would show up and that's all I guess that I just shouldn't have those expectations of you you know she, and she's like is she saying that she helps when she can but she's not so close. Uh, I think she, what I think I think with the 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 communication was that I I needed to really reach out to her and tell her that I needed I wanted her to I I needed to be the person reaching out and asking for help in order to get her help. And when I was just so in the grief process, I couldn't I didn't have that capacity. Okay, so um... I, I just expected friends to because I had a lot of friends that did reach out, but. 
I was just surprised, I guess, that she okay, didn't. And then when I told her I was disappointed, I feel like she's really backed off because she's okay, like, well, so let, me, let, me, let me let me cut yeah. you off. So so what's your question yeah. here? Is it about your friend? So I guess the question is, I'm um just curious if this is still a relationship to put any okay. energy into. No, definitely. But what I get from you and from your numbers yeah. is there's nothing wrong with your girlfriend, with the woman. There's nothing wrong with her. But I think there's lack of clarity as to defining the friendship. You know, what level is it on? Is it acquaintanceship? Is it professional? Is it deeply personal, you know, like your best friend or whatever? And whatever. It was all, it was all those things. Because it was all those things. If it, were, if it were, all of those things have got nothing to do when someone close to you dies, then the bare minimum you could do is to give them your condolences. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So the fact that she didn't and you were hurt, it means that prior to that, there was some kind of misclarity or lack of clarity. Mm. So I don't think it's to do with your dad passing away that she didn't connect with you, contact you. I think something before has happened yeah. that wasn't clear. Mm -hmm. So you need to clarify to your mind, you know, who is she? What does she stand for? And you need to reflect on whatever you did or did not do and maybe correct or modify those actions before you get hurt that she didn't give you her condolences. Something wasn't clear. Yeah, no, there were there were two previous times where I felt hurt and let down by her. OK, and I communicated that to her. And I think that was why she started kind of almost like backing off as a friend because she felt like I was just disappointed in her and then she didn't know how to be a friend even though I told okay. her just to check in I I don't know I am not getting anything from her mm. and what my guides are saying is again back to you you need to clarify <laughs> your relationship with people you need you remember the analogy of driving I'm not responsible. when you say when you say clarify your relationship does that mean like have a conversation First, with clarify with yeah. yourself. Okay. You know, what is my intention with that friendship? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have I done the best that I could? Are there instances or situation when I wasn't too clear or I did not mm -hmm. give when I should have given? Because you see, mm -hmm. with any relationship, it's accumulative. And at yeah. any point, whoo, it can go wrong and the whole thing becomes tumbling down. Yeah. So we go back to that analogy, you know, it's either your problem or her problem. If it's your problem, then what did I do wrong? What can I do to clarify? Mm -hmm. And I think there is lack of clarity. I keep getting that, you know, that there's lack mm -hmm. of clarity. And that's why there is not a clear um, definition or a clear expectation. For me, if you replace the word expectation with communication, you might get a lot farther. So mm. I would communicate, you know, like, did I do mm -hmm. anything wrong? Did I, if people are not getting it. And if she's not responding mm. the way you want to, it means you don't have the same definitions for whatever it is, which is why yeah. you're not on the same wavelength. Yeah. So yeah. worth keeping up with. I'm not mm -hmm. getting that this is a serious issue. I, I, I see like um, clouds over my eyes. So basically you're not seeing maybe things clearly. Maybe mm -hmm. you need clarify things calm down and say look i don't want to lose your friendship but i feel we're not on the same wavelength you know did i do did i say you know i'd like to have you mm -hmm. in my life i'm sorry if i ignored you and whatever so like really communicate from the heart and just lay it. if she mm -hmm. takes it up fantastic if she doesn't respond give her space but i mm -hmm. don't see it as ending i don't see it as you know dramatically serious it's mm -hmm. just a way to help you clarify I also feel about you that sometimes you assume or you understand a lot or you assume that others read your mind, but most people are not mind readers. So sometimes I find that I have to spell it out for people. For yeah, people, you know? that's a big lesson that I'm learning because I am so empathic yeah, and, and I intuitive. Think your and I, brain works I, need, I need to be very explicit in my communications. Yeah, and I'm, I think I'm learning that for sure. Your brain works very quickly. So sometimes mm -hmm. we don't communicate so clearly because, you know, like right. we understand it here. But we don't breathe deep briefly and choose our words to get it out. And that's partly your thing, which you mm. can change. And I think also in terms of awareness, maybe she's not on the same level, so she can't see your perspective. Yeah. You need to slow down a little bit and just, you know, out from the heart. 
Mm. Happened. I don't want to lose you. Maybe I, I feel you, you might have ignored her basically or, or something, or she expected you to be there or not be there. I think what she's saying between the lines is that she helped you, but what did you do for her? Something like that. I mean, I don't know, but this is the feeling mm -hmm. that I get. So if you mm -hmm. clarify that, it would work out. But in general, you need to express yourself better and mm -hmm. you need to approach people and because she's worth it she's a good friend she's positive i don't get anything negative about her and it's one of the things that you need to learn which is to breathe deeply and 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 choose your words so that people really understand what it is that you're after don't assume mm -hmm. especially when you're okay. really perceptive you assume that what you know what you feel other people do but they don't mm -hmm. so sometimes you really have to come down and like really spell it out in order for mm -hmm. them to catch up and then you'll be mm. talking on the same level, mm. which is interesting because a lot of my friends, my clients, you know, they have this issue, like you have a problem with a friend and um, and the two, including myself, seem to have completely different perspectives. And it's mm -hmm. funny, I was just today thinking about that and thinking that I, I want to call that friend and say, hey, where did I go wrong? <laughs> you know, because it's like really been going on, you know, nothing dramatic, but it's been going on and I feel it's not on the same wavelength and I have no idea why. So mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that you've asked that. Thank you. Does that help? It does. Thank you. Good. And for you, you've started a year of nine. So lots of reading, lots of reflection, lots of giving information as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so like, don't seclude yourself too much. It's time to go okay. back to act. Say that again. It's time to what? To go back, connect with people, interact so that yeah. you know what you know. Yeah. It's mm. almost like a tuning fork. When you've asked, you will know what comes Hello. up. But mm -hmm. when you are, are you still there? but when you are on your own, you don't know what you need to mm. know. Do you see what I mean? You need to be prompted yep. almost for you to know, okay, that's it. So if you're all alone, you're not prompted and then everything stagnates and stays the same. Yeah, that makes sense. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. That feels right on. Excellent. Thank Muhammad, you. how are you? My pleasure. All is well. I was confused with the time zones. So that, that's why I, uh, I've... Uh, I, I nearly sent out an email to everyone saying, do you want to do it earlier or later? But since we're on it next month, I think we, we would still be okay. The clocks would not have changed. Is this time okay? Or would you rather start earlier? For me, it doesn't matter. Okay. This is perfect. The seven o'clock European time is perfect. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll keep the same time, which is 9 p.m. Dubai time. Okay, great. Any questions? Mohammed is our youngest um, member, <laughs> very bright young man. So I'm happy you're here. Any questions on your mind? Basma, welcome. I don't know. <laughs> These days, I think that I'm reflecting or no, I'm in this uh, time of being silent more than speaking. Okay. That's a thing. Okay. So I don't know why. Uh, yeah. I think if there isn't a problem, then there isn't a problem. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like you want to go into a cocoon. I mean, when I do that is because I know that things are changing and I better wait before I open my mouth for things to settle down. Um, but, you know, you get to know yourself. But the important thing is not to avoid getting out there for too long so so long as you're aware of what you're doing and you're not taking it to an extreme because when we truly disconnect we lose sight of of things you know like what is my life about who's important in my life so if you stay in your head too long it's not very healthy so sometimes you need perspective but so long as you're enjoying yourself you're enjoying your own company it's fine so if it ain't a problem if, if it ain't broken then don't fix it yeah but it's if it is broken, then we need to look at it and we need to see why. Does that make sense? Yes, maybe I think I am waiting for uh, autumn. I'm, I like this month or okay. the, this, sorry, the season. You're hibernating. And, yes, and I'm looking forward for a new change with uh, first losing things, then they get there. Or Fantastic. 
yes. No, I That's agree with you. I understand that and I relate to it. Sometimes there's nothing to do. Um, you know, like at the end of the moon cycle, there are a couple of days where they call them void days. So like there's nothing, no energy or no, or don't do anything or don't start anything new. Um, energy is a cycle. So yeah, sometimes you just have to do things. Sometimes you just have to wait for things to come to you. Sometimes it's just a rest period um, where it's just about recollecting yourself before you start again. But if you are asking me if I sense anything wrong or out of place about you, no, I don't. I think you've described it really well. It's just a phase of relaxing because you're about to start a new period of your life. You're about to start university, etc. And I think this is the time to um, <sighs> exhale, relax and prepare for what we are going to become. I, I have questions that I write down on my desk and one of them to remind myself that we are forever changing. And I ask myself every day, who am I becoming? Who am I becoming? Who am I becoming? And this is to remind myself that things can change. What I like can change. What I want can change. What I want to create can change. Um, so, so long as you're open, then you will see the trends and then you will know what to modify, how to modify and how to drive yourself forward. So stay open, but as I said, so long as it's not negative, you're not aching, hurting anywhere, then yeah, it is just a period of hibernation or regrouping or um, reassembling, you know, it's almost like when a computer defragments, sometimes before we put, we, before we move forward, we need to put ourselves back together because these little bits are changing. You know what I like today, even in food, is so different than what I liked five years ago or 10 years ago. So even such personal things can change as we change. And the whole point is the evolution to progress. So stay open to that. But sometimes you need to cocoon. You don't need the influence of the outside world. So long as it's not for too long and you don't get extremely cut off, then that's great. It means you're aware of it. You're aware of your needs and you're just doing what you need to do. Does that make sense? Yes, too much. Good. Besma, I want to hear from you. How are you, if you are here? Yes, hi, Sahar. I'm here, yes. <laughs> hi, okay. <laughs> okay, you have it. You, well, anyway, I'll put the recording up, I guess, and then you can see what you've missed. But I'm so happy you joined. Is everything okay with you? Alhamdulillah, good. Uh, all is well, and uh, and I I tried to even if I'm super busy, I made the point to show up because you know. Fantastic! I appreciate to it. To say hi. Thank you, know. you. Thank you. Anything I can help you with? Any questions on your mind? Anything you want to share? I guess uh, I guess since we last uh, spoke and and met, uh, you know, I've been going through a lot of changes, so um and it seems like it's uh changes are like speeding up mm -hmm. with time for everyone but yes you're right and uh it, it, it's it's um i feel like uh how do we say it's um it's speeding up but uh, at the same time a lot of uh, uh, awakenings type of uh, thing you know like uh, like i'm living on both planes like the I understand the day, to, the day to day, but then another plane, you know, I can't bravo, explain, but bravo. no, no, I completely understand. And you brought up a very interesting point. We were talking kind of a little bit about that to with Mona, that there's a level of yeah. mastery and there's a level of apprenticeship and the energy is changing yeah. because it's more the focus is on us individually to be responsible yeah. for what we create <laughs> in our lives and to create on that level is a completely different thing of creating on a lower level of awareness so you're right there's almost that dual existent you know i'm up here but then i need to come down and do things physically and then i go up here and reflect and it seems to be happening at such a fast speed that yeah, yeah. i find myself changing my mind about a lot of things very quickly you know it's like yeah. going up there, oh, no, no, and then come down here okay no i don't really want to do that and then i go up here again it is like that you've You've hit the nail on the head. It is like that because why? Because we're switching between awareness, if you will, and it, it will, there will be glitches like that until yeah. we make the whole transition into this 
I'm going to call it a higher level of awareness. Yeah. And, uh, and, and kind of like uh, this awareness is, is basically taking me to the point of, uh, you know, uh, learning how to vibrate at a higher, uh, higher frequency in a way to keep up, you know what I mean? In order not to get entrenched in the old habits. Okay. You know, so how you do know, you cope? What do you do? This is nice. Um, important. Gratitude. Gratitude. Gratitude is, is so important so important every day gratitude is so important like before opening my eyes in my in my in my bed excellent just, uh, just starting that gratitude and um it does like make a uh a, 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 it makes because you know when you're in gratitude Saharan, you know that uh you, you cannot have negative thoughts when you're in gratitude you only have positive thoughts and positive energy so i kind of try to keep to, to start my day on that level and start, uh, even if I, if I don't have time to meditate, I just do that, which gets me started on the right foot. Um, and it seems things are kind of like folding. As soon as I don't let my emotions hijack me type of thing, exactly. whatever it is, negative exactly. thoughts, exactly. anger, whatever. It, it, when I become aware of it and I'm able to stop it, because obviously we uh, we're human i'm able to to say okay i recognize them I'm, I'm really angry at the same time i kind of like look at it as an observer and try of course sometimes super hard but it is but you're absolutely right and this is a very important point um like literally today i just finished my book on chakra healing and i was th the great thing about writing a book is that you reflect on what you know and you understand it in a different way and it made me think about how we really need to understand as human beings we have a lot of built-in glitches so we all have fear we all have emotions you know it just happens but as you grow older with awareness then you become aware of those patterns and the decision that you need to make as you said is i choose not to engage with that and then you rise above it because you understand that this is how the machine operates but it doesn't mean i am threatened it doesn't mean i will never make the right decision um, it doesn't mean that, you know, I give my power away. So I completely relate. I just want to add that what also became evident to me as I reflect, because now we're halfway in, in, yeah. in our 30 year celebration. And I'm really reflecting on my life and how everything developed and happened and what does it all mean? And I've realized that every glitch that took place, every drama, trauma, whatever, was absolutely necessary to get me to where I am today. And then yeah. I realized, my God, how perfect. I could not have planned it any better. And this is when I began to feel the gratitude. I say this because there's a lot of, I know gratitude is really in and trendy at the moment in one way, but on a deeper level, what you're doing by feeling the gratitude or being grateful is you're acknowledging the relief before something happens. And this is the way of manifesting it. What I'm talking about is you understand all the negativity in the past and then you love your journey. So instead of rejecting all those bad things that have happened, you're actually accepting them. So it's a different level of existence from the heart. Does that make sense? And once you accept the bits that you've rejected, this is when you truly feel grateful. Grateful to be alive at this point in time, grateful to be living here where I am now, i um, grateful that I have the friends that I have. I mean, I'm talking to all of us. When we begin to feel that, then we begin to see there was nothing personal about the drama and the trauma that I went through. It was all necessary to carve this journey that is my life in order to force me to grow to where I am today. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. And another thing is, um, I kind of like uh, try to always uh, look at my, uh, I am not my emotions. Eh, bravo, exactly. I am not my emotions. My I emotions. Not my thoughts, are... I am not my emotions. That's exactly. so important. So, because as soon as you, I realize that, then I'm able to control my vibration and I'm able to control my, you know, to, to keep up positive, bravo, to keep bravo. that high vibration and that is now the exercise i've been doing for the past i would say one year because 
it kind of struck my head like and with that as you said as soon as you keep your vibration high Sahar, then you, you can dip. manifest you don't you dip. Can man you can manifest and you don't dip down exactly of course yani fi, there are moments you know we're human as i said but as long as you're aware you have to snap out of it before you basically it's like a snowball uh, effect you know? for yourself absolutely correct yeah um i just want to say a little thing i don't like the way the word control because yeah. we cannot control but if you're we right. learn to surf the wave then we'll get safely to where we want to go but i like the word in charge of i am in charge of my mind i am in charge of my thoughts yeah. and that's why i almost always tell myself and my clients to always say when you get a negative feeling or a negative vibe or a negative thought to say i am not my emotions i am not my thoughts i choose to feel differently i yeah. choose to think differently exactly. and then you act on it so i like literally i say no stop it and i throw that thought away it's just a thing to remind me it's off and then i really get up and i do something else I, i i do whatever i make a cup of tea i put music on you have to interrupt the old pattern like two or three times and yeah. then it dies you don't react to it because exactly. emotions are a very high charge and Absolutely. if you teach yourself not to charge yourself up negatively which is yeah. why mona we said we need legs to the table so that you stay on top Otherwise, you'll be spending a lot of energy coming up again and then feeling down again and then coming up again. And this is to tie in with the bit earlier. That's why we need the rhythm so that life keeps moving forward. So no matter what happens, I go to the movies once a month. I read a new book once a week. You know, there are things that I keep doing no matter what. You know, even when my husband died and my mom died, I needed those things to pick me up. Otherwise, the whole thing would have crumbled down. So this is why rhythm is important. Awareness of time is important. Awareness of boundaries is important. And this is where we find or how we find our coordinates so that we keep moving no matter what. And then when we have a rest day, like Muhammad is, a cocooning or hibernation period, this is when you reflect and you say, okay, what was that about? What did it show me? And this is when we begin to move into patterns and understanding patterns which is, by the way, um, Mona is the third eye, that's the sixth chakra. When a consciousness is evolved to a certain level, it can begin to see trends. It can understand patterns. It can understand images, which is another reason why working with dreams is very good, because it raises your awareness that you quickly understand things instead of kind of, um, you know, having a hard time on a personality level dealing with it in a in a world of duality but if you go on that level there is no duality here you can instantly feel happy or feel understanding or feel guided does that make sense mm -hmm. so important not to dip down important to be grateful important to reflect and understand how everything was necessary to get us to where we are now otherwise we would not have been pushed out of our comfort zone And sometimes that realization allows you to cope and, and move forward in spite of the fact that we, all of us, most of us right now, may not be getting clear guidance because it isn't about that. It will be a period of time before things have crystallized. So we all have to put up with it, you know, until the wavelength has been fine-tuned and then we'll be on that new level and then we'll find our own tools and ways of how we manage to exist. From, aware, from an awareness point of view. Okay, before we wrap up, any questions, anyone, any feedback? And we'll meet next month on the 28th at the same time, which is 10 p.m. Dubai time. But I will take one question if anyone has it so that you leave feeling good. <laughs> no, satisfied customers? <laughs> I'm very happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you, uh, Basma. It's been too long. Good. Uh, I know it's been too long, and it's. I'm. I'm very happy to see you in good. Uh, good happy spirit. Good. Good shape. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you. So good to see you, and I'm so glad you came. And please join us next time. I love what you said, and and it helps to kind of say other things as well. So your input <laughs> is very appreciated. No, really, and it'd be nice to see you. Okay, have same here. Shukran. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm so grateful. A very good yeah. evening, and I'll see you next month. Thank you, Sahar. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. God bless. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Yeah, I love this. Right.